Hello and welcome to Penly. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the app. You can use the timestamps to navigate through the video. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we will be happy to help you. So Penly is designed to work with a Bluetooth stylus. However, if you have a non-Bluetooth pen, you can come into settings and under palm rejection, put this down to none. And hopefully this will allow you to write on the page. So when you first open the app, there are some default planners included. You can tap in these and start to use these right away, but I recommend that you tap on the arrow button and make a copy. And now you can tap into your planner and start to use this. So you swipe the screen left and right to navigate. So the planners included are undated and reusable. So you won't find any dates in the planner, but this allows you to write in the dates yourself and then you can reuse the planner again next year. To import a document, tap on the plus icon, import document, and then just browse to where your document is saved. And then this will import it into the app. And you can also import Penly format documents, import document. And I'm just going to browse to where my document is. And with this Penly format, it means that all my images and texts can be moved around and edited. So it is not a flattened PDF. So to write on the planner, you can tap on the pen icon. And here you have three different pens, ballpoint, fountain pen and brush pen. And here you can change the stroke size of your pen and you can also change the stroke color. These are the preset pen colors. However, if you tap it again, you can then find this color wheel and you can then change to a different color and make sure you change from dark to light as well. And this will give you a new color up here. Then you can just zoom into the planner with your finger and write in the dates. The next icon is the highlighter pen. So once again, you can change the stroke size and then you can also change the color of your highlighter. Tap in it again, you can pick from the color wheel and you have dark to light and also transparency. So this is more transparent and this is more opaque. And if you hold it down, it will snap straight. And same with the vertical lines as well. Next is the eraser and you have three different sizes. And if you tap on this arrow key here, you can see this is a selective eraser. So if I want to only erase the highlighter, I can check the highlighter and uncheck draw and text. And then you see this will allow me to erase the highlighter, but not anything else. And if I uncheck highlight and check draw, this will allow me to erase handwriting, but not the highlighter. Next is the text icon. So you can change your font size, change the font and the formatting. And once again, here is a color wheel. To use the text tool, just tap down on the page. And to come out of this keyboard view, use your pen and tap on the page again. And to change the style of text that you have already put down, you can just make sure you're in the text icon, double tap inside it, and then you can change the color and formatting. The image icon allows me to add photos and images. So if I tap on this folder icon, this allows me to add one image from my cloud storage or my download folders or my gallery. So I'm just going to pick an image here and this will bring it in and I can tap on this again. So these are in my downloads, but I can also navigate into my gallery. I can also tap on this folder icon and navigate to my OneDrive and pick an image in here. And just to mention, when you are navigating your folders, you can press on your back button on your tablet to come out one folder until you get back into your app. To select your image, you can just tap on the image when you're on the image icon and you can resize the image using the blue handles and you can rotate it using this blue dot at the top. Another way to rotate an image is to select the image whilst you're in the image icon or the select tool icons, and then just tap on the round circle at the top. And if you tap it, it will just rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees. And you can tap on crop, and this will allow you to crop the photo. And to come out of crop, you can just tap on the page with your pen. To copy and paste an image, go to the select icon and select your image, and then tap on copy and paste, and this will give you another image. And you can also go to a different page and tap on paste, and that will retain the clipboard. And if your paste icon is grayed out, that means there is nothing on your clipboard. So you can just tap on an object, and when you copy it, this will become black. To delete an image, you can just tap on it and tap on this delete button. Next is the stickers panel. So to navigate through your stickers, you can just scroll along the top and to place a sticker down, you can just tap on the image and that will bring it onto the center of your page. If you want to add a collection, you can tap on this plus icon here and then tap on new category from folder. And then I'm just going to navigate to my downloads, pick a folder and I'm going to say use this folder and this will bring all the images into that folder. And I can also just navigate to where that collection is. And if I tap on this again, I can rename this folder. I can delete the entire folder and I can add a folder of the images. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to add in this one here. And this will bring in all the images into that collection. Now, depending on how much memory you have in your device, if you find this process takes a long time, I suggest that you try to limit the number of stickers you bring in in one go and that will hopefully reduce the amount of time taken. 
To add in one image, you can just tap on the title again and tap in add image. And here you can just navigate to where you have one image and this will add it to the bottom. To delete an image, you can just long press on the image and tap on delete. If you want to delete the entire collection, you can tap on the collection and tap on delete. And it will prompt you if you want to delete it. If you tap on yes, that will delete the entire collection. Next is the select icon. Here you can select an image and tap on copy and paste. And this will give you a duplicate. You can also turn the page or go to a different page and tap on copy. And that will also keep the item on your clipboard. The bring back and forward icons will allow you to reorder your images. So if I tap on an image and I tap on these icons here, you can see that this brings it to the back and then this will bring it forward. To lasso a group of items on the page, just put your pen down and then drag it so that it selects everything and then you can move it all in one go. And to group it together, you can tap on this group icon. And what that means is that when you tap off the selection and you tap back on it again, it will remember the group. And to ungroup it, you can just tap on the same icon again and that will allow you to select the two images individually. Now, if you find that once you've grouped an image, you can no longer select it with the lasso tool, go into the drop down and turn on group. And this will allow you to group the selection. And under this drop down menu, you can also uncheck other items. So if I uncheck text, this means that when I try to select everything, text isn't going to be selected. And that's also the case when I tap on this select everything icon, it's not going to select my text. And if I go back in and uncheck highlight, when I try to select everything, everything but text and highlight will be selected. Now, I don't suggest that you check link because this will allow you to select the hyperlinks in your file and you can accidentally move hyperlinks. So if I select this, you can see that this is a hyperlink and now I can accidentally move this without realizing. So I would always suggest that you leave this unchecked. To create a hyperlink, tap on your object, tap on hyperlink, and then I'm going to create a page link to page 50, tap OK. Now you have to come out of select mode and when you tap on this, this will take you to page 50. To remove that hyperlink, go back into select, select it, tap on link again, and then just tap none and this will remove the hyperlink. And you can also hyperlink text and handwriting as well in the same way and you can also enter a web link. Here you have the undo and redo buttons. You can navigate through the planner using the hyperlinks. So here are weekly hyperlinks and then if you tap on these days, these are daily hyperlinks and you can also go back to the week and go back to the month. At the top you have a to-do list and notes and here you can just pick the note paper you want. You've got a commonly used stickers area where you can put down your favorite stickers. And this year overview is blank but once you've written in your dates you can just tap in any box to be taken to that date. So by default you can tap on a hyperlink in pen mode. So I'm just going to illustrate what I mean. So here you can write on it and that will not take you to the hyperlink but if you tap on it it will take you to that hyperlink and you can disable that in settings uncheck allow interaction in edit modes and then just go back into the app and now when you're in edit mode when you tap on the hyperlink that will not activate the hyperlink in settings you can also change the toolbar layout from a single bar into a dual bar and now back in the app you'll find that when you tap on the icons the secondary toolbar appears below the first toolbar so i suggest that if you find yourself missing some secondary toolbar icons or that the two toolbars do not fit in one screen try the dual toolbars in settings you can also change the scroll direction from horizontal to vertical so what this means is that instead of scrolling left and right you can scroll up and down if you select an object and find that the blue handlebars are too big you can go into settings and then under the selection ui scale you can change is too small and then when you come back out you'll find that the blue handlebars are smaller. To organize your pages tap in thumbnails view here and then here you will see all your pages in your planner. You can tap on edit and if you tap on a page and tap on copy it will say one page copied then let's say I want to copy it here I can just long press on here and then tap on paste after and that will paste this page to here. And I can also select a page, copy, and I can also come out of this thumbnails view and I can navigate to a different page, go back into the thumbnail view and then go into edit mode, long press on this, and this has retained the item on my clipboard. And to delete a page, I can just tap on it and tap on delete. To move a page, you can tap on it, tap on cut, and then browse to where you want to put it, long press on the page and tap paste but be careful with the cut button because if you accidentally come out of the app or you somehow lose the item on your clipboard you will not be able to restore that the plus icon in the top left corner allows you to create a new page so here you can use an image as your background or you can just pick a color so here i'm just going to pick a pink color go ok and then i can create and this will just give me another page in the middle of my document 
The page indicator at the top tells you how many pages there are in the document and what page you're on. If you tap on this, you can then type in a different page number and tap on OK, and this will bring you to that page. If you want to go back to the page you were working on previously, you can tap on this back button. So this back button will not take you to the previous page, which is page 49. It will take you back to the page that you were previously working on. So this will bring you back to page 599 and then tapping on this will bring you back to page 50. In files view, if you tap on the drop down arrow, you can export your file, copy, rename and delete. So to export my file, I can tap on export and I can save it as an editable Penly file. So what this means is that when you re-import your file, you can still move around all the text and images whereas a PDF is a flattened image, so you will not be able to edit anything. So to back up your file manually, I suggest picking Penly file, and then this has just put it into your download folder as a backup. To restore an automatic backup, you can tap on this arrow key, tap on backups, and then you can tap on the date and time of the backup you want and do copy to documents. And this will bring you the backup from that timestamp. To import a document, tap on the plus arrow, tap on import document, and then browse to where your document is, and this will bring in your document. To create a folder, tap on the plus icon, tap on create folder, give your folder a name, and now you have a new folder, and you can just long press and drag files into that folder. And then you can rename your folder, delete the folder, and you can go back in, and then to get these documents out of this folder, you can just long press on it and put it over the back button, and this will bring it back out into the previous folder structure. You can search by file name, so tap on this magnifying glass, and this has found my file. If you need any help, you can reach out to us via email, or you can tap on this envelope icon at the top, and then you can let us know your email and send us a message.